Welcome back, everyone, to the JPEG Close Qualifiers for EU. And that's our last round of 16 match still to go through. Flurk, we have the big boys. Well, I think they're big boys anyway. We have four to come against Trukut, which is the only Croatian team that we actually have, yep. which is, I'm sure, probably everybody in production who are yep. all Croatian are probably rooting for. Yeah, they're obviously huge Rainbow Six Siege fans in production. This is, you know, you got your national team, you got your local team. Yep. Obviously, this is a team that has some historical players. Uh, Nello, I am sure it's probably, I don't even have Twitch chat open right now, but I'm sure he's out there cheering them on because this is a team that he has history on. This is a team that you have history with, if I'm correct. Yes. Yeah. So, you, you know, there's a lot of history with the team. Um, but they're up against Forza. And that is a worry for a lot of teams. Forza exceptionally mm -hmm. good right now. Yeah, just uh, absolute dominant in everything that they've kind of played in. Look at them in Challenge League. Didn't actually win Challenge League, which is more of a surprise. BDS did manage to best them, which can only be described as like one of the most craziest matches where it was border, fours were 6-0 up, and BDS pulled it back and drew 6-6 six, six of them. So both of those teams are so heavily contested, oh, yeah. and it, it doesn't even matter that fours didn't win. They still get what they want, and that is a relegation battle. Yeah, so, uh, and that's one of the things that we kind of can't put to a side, really. I guess we'll jump into the map bands, um, and we'll have a look at where they want to go. I'm assuming Forts are going to ban Coastline. It's their often go-to banned map, and then obviously when you're in the band, there it goes, yeah. Taking that out straight away. They keep that off the table. They've performed on it a couple of times and never really enjoyable. The other one, they are, you know, they often ban out Bank and Border, but Coastline is their go-to, and Troker instantly taking Cafe out, and I think that's a fair shout. It is. That's a very basic but decisive match or map for fours in every match that they've played. Um, I kind of feel like all of these maps are just fours. Perhaps like Bank or Villa could be getting rid of, but you look at Border Club and Consulate, that's just like fours all day of the week. I kind of still feel that like every map is fours all day of the week because, of course, who they're up against. It's just going to be really tough for Truckett to try and get something on the table and it's down to them what map they feel most comfortable on, which is kind of what we expect them to be better on compared to the other maps that I'm sure are going to be left in. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you kind of break down where you want to take this team to. They're going to opt uh, Clubhouse for Forza, which is a good map for them. They're a very strong team in there, but it could play a little bit into the favor of Trucker because it's a known uh, strategy map. You know a lot of the holds that people are going to do before they even do them. It's just overcoming the insane gunning that is on the side of Forza. Now, as I very briefly said before, one of the things that can play slightly into Trocket's favor is Forza does have their relegation match coming up. They're probably going to be more focused on that right now, just because that's a very big deal. And it's an immediate deal as well, because you've got to deal with it before the qualifications for this actually end. So if they can kind of take advantage of that, they might be able to find some more rounds in and amongst out of it. So they pick... There is options there, I think, potentially for, like, a, a Villa being thrown in, which Fours haven't really played a whole lot of Villa. They've played a lot of Bank. They, of course, Border. You never want to go uh, against Fours on Border. You never want to go against them on Consulate. So either way, I think Fours are still going to have the better end of the map picks. And there goes the Consulate pick. Right, so they've just gave themselves a death sentence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why would You've got to be so confident. To go up against Forza. Gotta be insane to take them to that. Like, that's a, such a good match. Like, for them. oh my word, you've gave them club and consulate. Oh my. Well, hey, all the power to you, Trucker. You're on your main home stage. All the people of uh, Croatia are out here, outside the studio now, cheering for you, cheering you on. Um, And so it's, you know, this is. This is <laughs> this is down to you. Uh, so okay, thoughts are on these two maps. Uh huh. What makes it so hard, demo? Ah, uh, well, I mean, both of them are very flexible in how the attacks can kind of play around. Clubhouse is always dependent on the bands, but consulate especially, you can bring the exact same set of operators, and they will work for every bomb site. And that's something that Forge will happily go ahead and, and do. The way that they coordinate their attacks in towards admin is what every team should try and aim towards and having that master class of a, of a roam clear out, which is absolutely incredible. It's just the sheer fragment potential that Force have. You look at RAS, you look at WTG, you look at Pasha. 
you know, those are the big three that we see time and time again put up so many kills onto the board, and it's really difficult for, like, any team. Even Penta at this stage have to be worrying. Yeah, because obviously we've seen Forza do big things on a big stage against big teams not too long ago. They kind of had that meteoric run where they were so underappreciated and undervalued, and then they find themselves in the top four, and you're just looking at that like, well, this is, you know, this is a team that has just completely blown through. The same way that Empire, who are historically a team that's partnered with them, based on obviously coming from the same region of Russia, based on having the same meteoric rise, and based on also having... Uh, Shockwave come over as well and kind of revitalize the team and bring his level of information that is often hard paralleled across the game. You know, it, it's a nightmare because they have a similar play style to Empire. They The trust in the process style where you will, you know, say, for example, you look at Consulate, you take admin every time. That is the Empire way. You break in through admin, clear across, down, you win the map. Well, you occasionally lose them all the round. But then you do the same thing again, and it works. Like, there's no way to really stop it working. I don't think we've ever seen a player like Shockwave where he gets dropped from a team who finished second place at the invite and being able to make such a run for these past six months. He's went in free Challenger League. He managed to finish top two. Also took, of course, third to fourth place at the Major, which was miraculous from fours. I know everybody from EU was kind of expecting them to do so well, but... Yeah, You know, every other region kind of rode off four straight away, especially if, the, if you look at Group D. They had Dark Zero, they had Fnatic, and Face Clan. Those are three tried and tested teams in each of their own regions. Fours come out of nowhere, and they just swipe everybody away. They swipe left. They don't swipe right, they swipe left. Yeah, and obviously, you know, what? They came what, third, fourth, and rally on the first one. They smashed through the first qualifier. Yeah, the open quals, that was where we really seen Force dominant. And I think that's at that point where we seen them just landslide every team they came up against. That's where everybody you knew they're going to have a really good chance at rally. Yeah, but uh, we have our last two bands. Sorry about the pause there. Villa and Border are taken out, and the last one is going to be Bank as we... Uh, I believe I'm jumping back to us just for a second as I finish writing my notes and getting everything down together. Yeah, so obviously, you know, we can talk about Forza for a lot. Truck up, they're a team that have a history in Siege as a team and as a kind of org, but for kind of playing stuff, um, I guess we'll have to find out a little bit later as unfortunately we're just going to have to quickly jump to a break, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. We'll see you guys after some very quick adverts.
Everyone and welcome back to the studio. Now, as some of you have quite rightly noticed, 102 Fort, so that is unfortunately due to Trocott not being able to make the time to get into the first map, so it is four foot. However, it's a best of three, so we're gonna head into the second mm -hmm. map now with Forza pretty much on the series point. And well, Trucker, they still have a chance, it's a slim one, but they have a chance to pull these two maps back. They are on a back foot, however. Yeah, and the fact that now they have to go and play consulate isn't going to help them into the bargain either. So, unfortunate circumstances, but it is what it is. Whatever she'll be, she'll be. I think is that that's how it goes, Just, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think they were given the option of obviously, like, we can, you know, their player can uh, get there in time or can get to the lobby in time. So the window passed and they said, well, you can forfeit the entire thing or you can take one map and we'll give you another extension on the time. They opted for that. They still want to play. They still want to kind of give a battle and give a show. So... Hey, let's see how it swings back in now. Trocket versus Forza on Consulate. Consulate, uh, obviously, we've already said it's a great Forza map, and they're starting on the defense. They are, and their defenses are very flexible. And that just adds into the addition of the Rome game and the strong fraggers that they have in their lineup. And first band for them will be Capitao. So that's specifically going to be done. So. Basically, B, Yellow Stairs take is out of the question now for Truck. Yeah, well, if they want to go for it, it's going to be a lot more difficult. So Admin will be the more preferred favorite site, I would feel, for both sides of the bargain. And there's Jackal as well gone. So perhaps, Truck, they may be also looking to go for a bit of a heavy extension room game whenever they get to have a turn. Well, Echo taken off the table as well. The thing about Consulate, it is going to leave... Obviously, the hard destruction on Valkyrie is still on the board, though, which for me is the bigger issue because she is such a big operator for this map. She can really play into that external information, and you know, it's just a nightmare. And I'm hoping she's this last ban spot now because otherwise, yeah, yeah. there we go. Because um, otherwise, you've got to play IQ every round. Like, there's no two ways about it. But now the way I look at it, Fluk, is... Right, so Capitao's off the board, so top floor becomes a little bit more difficult for the attacks to take control off. But then you may be thinking, oh, but, you know, there's still hard breachers there. Basement should be pretty simple for the attacks. No, because the defense now, they get Mira and they get Maestro to hold things down, and that is never going to be an easy combination to go up against, and straight away, Maestro being locked in, and the Mira expected from force because they're not afraid to shy away and they do have their mere strategies typically there to provide vision for their teammates and i'm sure rask and pasha they're kind of that duo ship those are the main two kind of fraggers we're looking at i know that i mentioned wtg on the attack he's more of that flex role he's great at getting those kind of mid-round kills you know whenever not a lot happens it gets pretty stale and then all of a sudden two kills come out of nowhere oh and looks wtg that's the kind of role he plays yeah, and obviously this is a map that really plays well into quick movement on defense. They've instantly locked in the Nomad there as we're going to head to Cafe that as the first point. Now, with all the uh, hard destruction being up, this is the most viable this point is. But at the same time, yeah. Mira is up as exactly. well. And this is maybe one of the few points where she has, I would say, her full usage. Yeah, that vision that you can gain. Sure, there is other information operators like the Maestro, but those cameras, they can be destroyed. Mira Windows, on the other hand, they're a little bit more of a, a nuisance, we could say. The only real way to get rid of them is either if you shoot them or you get a Twitch drone, which again is pretty unlikely to really get a Twitch drone into the heart of the bomb site past everybody. But then again, Habana is also up. So that is a possibility of eliminating the mirror windows. 
but just the Fermite being chosen by, by the attack. No Habana from them. They look as if they will try and take control of mid floor because that's why they have the Sledge on the table. And yes, Buck is also up there, but they're a team that prefers using the Sledge. And it's just more personal preference for your soft structure, isn't it? Do you want the LA or do you want the C8? Up to yourself. Well, that's the thing, and that's the way it kind of breaks down. But here comes the slow, well, I say slow push, quick drone work against the point as they're still slowly setting up inside the point. And you can see the body up in the top of yellow as well. With the door open, they're going to play this as aggressively as you generally expected them to. They also have, obviously, Pasha on the mozzie to get that roaming information and the ability to keep that kind of momentum up across the map. Here is no time wasted from Trucker as they roll in and find one, but the smoke pops off to stem the roll and Kama just gets a double. They fed themselves to his gun. Ah, well, that's uh, definitely one of the fails of the week. You try and attempt the rush that typically does work, but you come up against the powerhouse that is fours and they are taking all of this for granted. <laughs> Already off the bat, a 1v5 now. And well, into a 1v4 from Lackey, but still, there is so much to do for him. Fords are just hunting at this stage. They do feed him another kill and another one. So that is three of a kind. A, a long fed smoke even into the barrel. Yeah, Fords, they are just, ah, they know they have this. I mean, yeah, it, like <laughs> the fact that they opened against the Alder just stood on a desk and ringing them away. Like, don't get me wrong, Lackey is doing good work here to try and pull it back in, but when you're on this such a small amount of health, you're still up against a smoke that could drop you very easily. You're up against a mirror that has all the information in the C4. The diffuser you're just ignoring at this point because you know you're trying to go to take this as a firefight instead. And at this point, Forza don't have to peek you. They have all the information. And when you round, Mira is swinging around the white van there. It was, a, it was a bold open and a good attempt, but when the man is stood on the box with an uh -huh. LMG and yep. just holding fire, it's a hard way to win a room. We also seen fours try and hold the mid floor. So they had roamers upstairs in bathroom. We seen, I think the mirror was there and also accompanied by, uh, I want to say the mozzie. So there is a little bit of, of gas in the tank of fours. They're looking to try and open up early on and try and take away control of mid floor that typically we, we kind of expect the truck to go for that. We didn't expect the crazy rush. We didn't actually get to see the whole set of the mid floor. We didn't really uh, get to see why they were doing it, what kind of angles and stuff they were playing at, what was their positioning like. I'm sure if we go back to Garage again, they'll do the same thing, and perhaps we'll see a little bit more inside of the minds of Fours. But as it stands, we will be moving into our next bomb site, the top floor for Fours. And since Capital is gone, I do solely expect to see an admin take. And if they do try and go for yellow, it's going to be a tough one. And the reason why, without the Capital, taking B is so difficult is the little area where you see that hatch beside B. That area is really difficult to get control of if you cannot fire that man away. Yeah, and obviously it becomes such a tight kind of balance. The thing about taking control of yellow, in NA you see it more as like a go-to first step. They always generally try and get control of yellow on this point and they'll, you know, cook ADSs. It's very par for the course. Whereas in EU, you see a lot more like admin takes that was kind of popularized by the Russian teams of getting in on the other side, utilizing your kind of, you know, cross angles against the windows, find your way inside and then push horizontally across the floor as you sometimes set someone off in the lobby windows to cover that angle and stop people hard pushing you. You have big firefights across long desk. And those are the kind of trades you see, and that's why Camera is putting up the Maestro Cam there, because they fully generally expect it to be from that side. Now, I guess we'll see how they utilize. Obviously, they've doubled down on the rotation cover with the Nomad and the Gridlocks. They're trying to get control of the three staircases. And as we said before, this is a very, very quick map. You can get from the top to the bottom with, in the blink of an eye. In terms of the map size, it's quite small in terms of garnering information. A pulse can get everything on one side of a push as an example of how this can work. So playing into the hands of a player like Rask, who you already see aggressively moving around, playing into a, you know, a player like Kama, who can pop up and get these many, many frags. That play style is, well, it's a bit dangerous to go up against Forza with. Looks to be A. Definitely for Truckett, the way they're positioned already, having the man on the double windows and everybody else spawning towards admin. So I'm curious to see how fours will try and open up. Only the one C4 on hand. That will be from Shockwave. They went for a much more kind of anchor heavy with the ACOGs. You have the Maestro being brought in and also Doc now into the fray of things. 
I like the mute pickup because that will help them with any kind of offsite holes they want to maintain. But we don't see any of that towards the admin side, which is generically where Mute is best used is to stop the drones being applied in, and it just makes your roamers a little bit more of an undetectable source. First Blood, though, does go in the way of Trukut, and Lackey again fires on through, and Rask gone. Well, Lackey was a player who managed to find some bodies, but it was in a five versus one previously. So how much they had of an impact, I guess, is always going to be down to the history books. But in the meantime, putting some immediate pressure again against this side. As we said, this is the general standard EU take admin, and the grenades are popping around the corners as Kammer at least battles back against the Nomad and gets the refrag. Now you can see the one body trying to close down against this yellow side. It might get to the back of the... Yeah, there goes Maestro. Unfortunately, did not expect the sledge, who I said... Standardly, there's always another operator creeping around beneath, ready to collapse back against players that try those wide runouts that we generally expected from the sides. Runs out into gunfire there to try and meet their end. A shockwave just, I guess, decides that he's had enough of waiting inside point. But with 50 seconds and a four versus two, this is looking pretty good for Trucker. Stim Pistol did manage to pick up shockwave, but very quickly has been put down again. And it's just down to WTG on the smoke. See if he can try and open up in. He's in bathroom, but Diffuser being planted. Has the shield and doesn't see the man there. So pings and does stop the Diffuse. Smoke also get tossed in to try and eliminate the Dogby, which he will do and try and keep the Sophia at bay. Diffuser now being planted, but still that constant information being gathered by the Maestro camera. Another one gets tossed in, but barely misses Sophia. And as long as there's cover from Freak and Spiral, this should be winnable. Oh no, WTG, he's all of a sudden made a mistake. I think he caught a glimpse of the man below and he's just trying to play his angles. This is a good rotation though from Sophia because she can see the diffuse if WTG tries to go for it, but he has a suspicion where she might have went to and yeah, there you go, the lockout. And truck it, well, their admin take it worked for them. I mean, that was it. It was pretty clean. If It was almost the heroics of a smoke kind of against all odds that pulled themselves back into it. But it was little moments like when the maestro was still knocking down a, a door and preparing for a run out that didn't really matter that kind of handed a little bit of ground back to the favor of Trucker. They took it very, very well. As I said, they almost played what I kind of guess they would from the beat for beat. They had the people go in admin, they had the one person come up lobby, they had the person rotate underneath. It was a standard take and it shows the EU, I guess, to that level of it boils down to these gunfights. Console is where we're going to swing to uh, well, again, even. Um, and they're doubling down on the Rome cover again, bringing both Nomad and the Gridlock, swapping out the sleds for the Ash, potentially going to try and get a bit more pace in the clear moving underneath. And there's a, still a fair few ACOGs on the sides of Forza who are, again, are happy to try and have these long-range firefights across this top floor. Freaky also switching off the sledge. That's another player that we didn't really get to dive in towards. And he's the only real historic player on that roster who does have a history in this game. We can date back way back into uh, year one, season three, where he was part of Pentasports, and that is now known as G2. Also played for Game Ward not too long ago. There's some history with him. Yeah, that's the thing about it, is obviously we've kind of talked about you know, how this long this orc has been in the game, and it's one that has seen a fair few names kind of transition through it, and this is just another iteration where they have this bigger name, they have this bigger situation, but they're just trying to find a way, I guess, to get it to stick around, get it to work, and get it to continue to work. But I guess we'll see if they can be the character uh, that can kind of lead the team, because whenever you see someone who does have a character in the game and a, and a kind of history is a is a player across the board you normally put a bit of pressure on them you say well okay prove your medal prove your history prove your worth you're the only person on this team to have a linked name on liquipedia show us why that is and you know i guess they're one of the players that you expect to see light up a little bit as the game goes on and just kind of see what the merit that they can bring to a team of otherwise fairly unknown players Top floor, again, for fours. They will try and hold it in towards yellow primarily. Not a lot of emphasis on holding admin, which is where Trucket did come from last time. So I would have expected fours to try and adapt and perhaps try and set up something else. They did fall short to Freaky, who was kind of lurking by himself as that lone wolf 
Operator, who did pick up one kill onto Kama, who jumped out previously. And again, Admin just being given to them. But perhaps this is baiting them into what Force have in store, which is potentially a new kind of adaptation in what they've went for the previous round. Freaky not going for kind of the lone wolf hunt. As I say that, now he enters in through the mid floor. And I like that they still have some kind of pressure towards B windows. It doesn't allow the defenders to have that much movement control. Oh, just a quick peek from Nazarak. And wow, what in the world is Kama doing being caught up like that? Yeah, that's twice we've seen Kama get caught completely unaware in the past two rounds and then dropped because of it. The first round, he was caught aware, but was at least pointing in the right direction and able to find a double in it. And great swing there from Marv to find Shockwave, but then a pick comes up again. This long desk, long angle firefight, this is what we expected to see, and so far we're seeing it pretty well. The cover here is being watched. Rask has, might not know that Freaky has eyes towards that side and potentially doesn't want to swing down. Wants the firefight to come to them instead. Has the ability and the possibility to collapse here against this eastern side, and they have some eyes against it, so this could be a very make or break frag if Rask decides to swing around, but otherwise there is still WTG with the smokes on the far side. The window of connector is slowly being taken over and some big destruction comes out against the shield as Rask finds his swing around on those stairs and Pasha is in a little bit of a slightly better position now as the close down has been cancelled. Marv swings round, pops some pre-fires, but nothing catches as Freaky has to rotate to the lobby side, popped by the drone, and Jaeger's actually going to move around and amongst it. But with 20 seconds left, they have to head upstairs. Pasha finds Marv, drops it down to another little bit of a two versus three. All of them are injured. None of them in this situation look like they're in a position to pick up that diffuser and get the plant down as they try and close down very, very quickly. But with smoke still on the board and a dock with a long angle, at this point, this looks like it's another force around. A lot of information being gathered by fours, that's been their mainstay, and Freaky tries to explode on in, and he does pick up another one, and we kind of thought fours would lock this out, but somehow, truck it, they've managed to get the diffuser down, and once more, WTG in the clutchable position. I feel this one's gonna be a little bit more tougher for him. Tries to move in towards meeting room, knows that one did flee out. In towards the admin side, pre-fires with the shotgun, and he's gonna try and go for the stick, but I don't think that's gonna work for him, and nobody biting from Truck Up, though. Here comes Freaky, more information being fired in with the pings. Only three more bullets, and there's Freaky peering over the table. And Truck It, another top floor attack for them. We thought Forge would have had that one in the bag. Yeah, there's me saying this looks like a Forza win, eight seconds on the board, but Smoke was nowhere to be seen. He was playing off on yellow stairs. He was kind of paying attention to, I guess, nothing. And then they just took advantage of that. Truckett never gave in, never surrendered, and they found a round win out of it that really should have been Forza's if they were paying a bit more attention. And that seems like the biggest problem so far is that Forza's brains don't look like they're really, they're not running at the full pace you expect them to. Whether it's because obviously they've got the upcoming relegations and they're a bit more focused on that and they're kind of, you know, half playing this and maybe there's a lot kind of on the plate. But at the same time, I'm curious what Smoke was doing. I'm curious what Maestro was doing. There's so many of these little moments where I'm like, what, what's going on, Forza? So, fours now, they have definitely fallen off the rails a little bit. And that top floor, which we expect is to be a nice free-flowing bomb site for them where they can really utilize the rotations and roamers that they have, but they didn't put anything towards admin. They put no fight whatsoever. They cave truck at everything they wanted. Now we head down to the basement. We head downstairs. No mirror this time around though for fours. Last time they did have this exact same setup, but with the mirror window, now they've brought in the mute. So perhaps they feel as if that they need to have the denial of the drones. And if you didn't know, mute in this bomb site particularly, there's elevated positions in the basement that you can place the jammers on that will extend the radius of the bubble up through the flooring. And that also sanctions off the yellow stairs, the double door leading into circle desk. Also the spiral uh, one is coming in towards that circle desk as well. And I think the last one also an antechamber. So there is so much stuff that you can really deny with the mute jammers and it's great utility, but he's actually gonna be using them upstairs to perhaps try and deny like a Habana charge if it goes onto the bathroom wall. But Trucker, they have been solely bringing the Fermite. 
well. They're setting themselves up for this top floor clear. Going to move their way steadily across it. Not a huge roam presence on this side of the top floor. And instead, they're going to try and hold down on the yellow stairs above the piano. Give themselves a bit of drop down control so they can keep piano from above. Expecting more direct piano push. I've said the word piano there too many times. But hey, we're going to wait for the music to kick in as they steadily the music clear man? across. And he comes from far away. What can he say? Well, there's at least one in the bathroom and then there's a lot of mute jammers down they have to get that body out of the top floor whether it's just from shepherding back or actually finding the kills against the man above the drop down and there's also the man in yellow who has the option for cover shockwave behind the safety of a mute jammer is ready to pop around the corner and pop the head off of anybody that gets a bit too close but otherwise this seems pretty slow and steady from the side of trucker they are breaking open lobby and they're going to try and, I guess, bait the push from Forza into them. And otherwise, the Ash is trying to find the initial firefight in the midst and in the back of it. But without any solidity so far closing down, they're in a little bit of a tight spot here. So Trucker are looking to try and take the fight towards this mid floor. The only man that they haven't dealt with as of yet, well, besides Shockwave, but he's not going to be really challenged for a while yet, it will be Rask in towards that top floor, who is the supporting cast member beside Shockwave. He will start to get droned out, and I think a fair few gunfights will be coming his way, and there's Pasha, he falls, and Ras does get. Oh, just one for his troubles, but that's all. That's all he gets, and I'm really surprised that he didn't get more in that scenario, but hey, one kill's one kill, and Kama trying to peek up through the hatch onto that wall that was opened up by the Ash, at least giving just a little bit of cover to try and help Shockwave, who honestly could drop down at any moment, but he's sticking with the room game. Well, with 50 seconds on, they've got to start actually collapsing towards the point. They open the main door, they have some of the hatches with pressure, and it's actually forced the Forza players out of the A point. They're going to have to try and watch it from a little bit of range and a little bit of safety. The long arm of the smoke goes out over the top and trusts the angle as they know someone is collapsing in from behind them. WTG is just trying to keep the ground and the space alive as long as possible. This camera behind pipes is going to take the mantle of the long angle. But with the smokes being popped and 20 seconds on, they know that the players are about to come in. This could be monumental and he finds Freaky. Shockwave manages to at least direct all of the attention of Forza to one direction and one position and Kammer is able to make good use of it with a big triple coming out of the back of the LMG. They rely a lot on that maestro in that garage, don't they? The information gathering that they can obtain from the evil eyes is, is great. And just the LMG, the position they have them in, it's perfect to really shut down anything that comes their way. So the mid floor hold didn't get challenged as much as what I thought it would. They just opened up the sidewall, but that's all it was. Just a sidewall. They still left the mute to kind of in there and waste a lot more time. It meant that they could never really have a firm grasp on the mid-floor destruction that we talk about with the verticality that you want to try and uh, bring and then eliminate the anchors on site. Because if, if you think of whenever you see the Maestro just running about the middle of the bomb site, if there was holes above him, he would not be able to do that. Yeah, and that's the thing about it is obviously they kind of pushed in and they I think they just spent so much time droning out the top floor and getting those opening two picks that when they realized, oh no, there's more roam and there's more presence down directly above the point, we've still got to clear that. And we don't have that cleared. We don't have the ability to just open up the angles and the holes that we like in antechamber or across piano. We have to get downstairs. And that allowed Shockwave, who stuck the roam out to go, Oh wait, I can collapse down now. I have 20 seconds on, I'm either going to die or I'm going to draw attention. Either way, this is a good move. And it just kind of shows that Trucker, they're trying to take it slow and steady, but the more forts are kind of stretch them and stretch that time, the more they're going to find themselves limited in that final push. Still, 2-2, two, two, they've done well to take the first two rounds out uh, two rounds out of the initial first four rounds. I guess let's see if they can kind of keep shifting that momentum in their favor before they swing to the defense, which could, if they keep this kind of tenacity, really play well in their hands. How do they set up with their top floor, which hasn't worked as well before? Well, spawn peak is what Pasha answers us with as he's looking towards that eastern spawn point. Which, to be fair, the past two times where they know that Trucker have went for the admin take, they do spawn towards the east. But unfortunately, that spawn peak was very short-lived and comes back to the bomb site. So still not implying any pressure at all. As I say that, here comes Rask at, just straight over towards Abna. I thought Pasha was going to go help him, but instead pulls it back to Connector, where he can really utilize those stim pistols. Air jab being tossed in, and Shockwave, unfortunately, cannot shoot that off. And... Yeah, at this stage, remember they know they've spawned east and they know they have an air jab on the balcony. It has to be an admin take. Did he get?
get that? Uh, I guess we're only going to find out when he attempts just to jump wait, out. Just wait until the tetanus just wears off real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll listen for the wobbly noise. As Freaky yet again has crept his way in through the lobby side. And is trying to make his way steadily across any roamers that might be underneath. So far, it seems like they're going for a similar thing, but they're less out in the open. No maestro behind the reception desk welcoming people to shoot him in the face this time around. Nomad is trying to get control above, and Rask with a knife against Nazareth. Nazarovac, apologies, and the man underneath Marv's head ducks in and is playing around this side. Rask creeping around the admin office and finding many bodies for his trouble. Gets the third, the diffuser's down two. How has he got away with this? Well, Rask, we said that he was going to be a highlight player for them, and he shows up. Finally, they put a little bit of pressure into admin, and Trocket just cannot cope with that. I don't know how they can't cope with that. Freaky still blow by himself. The only disadvantage of having him in this position is that nobody's going to assist him with refrags or potentially pushing from different angles. Both of these players are so separate from each other. They couldn't be further apart. And fours, whenever they're on top, they never let you go. They will pin you to the ground and they will keep you there until it goes one, two, three. Well, they have the diffuser. They have all the information that they need about where the defenders need, uh, where the attackers need to go. And at this point, as the defense, they just need to kind of well, keep that in their favor. Rask is still free to do all the admin work in the admin office that he wishes. And so far, that admin work has generally been filing the death reports for any attackers that come close. Lackey and Freaky have at least doubled up and tried to find their way via long desk, but it is a crossfire position. I'm a little bit curious as to why they've opted to go for this push instead of potentially one of the others, but I guess maybe they assumed that it would be the less attentive area. Maybe they would have expected to rotate more towards the stairs closer to admin and, you know, gone, well, maybe if we push in here, we might get them behind, but Maestro's still there. And there you can see Freaky kind of expected around the corner. There is the free fire spin from at least one, but it's only a down and, well, there's the rest of Forza as Rask closes off a 4K for the round. Yep, MVP of the round so far, and well, Ras now he's starting to wake up a little bit, and that should now show forward for this final defense. Just a little bit of roam game. Truckett can't deal with it whatsoever. They can take examples from what happened in the garage. They held their mid floor. Not a lot of things really happening for Truckett. They didn't want to push the man inside a bathroom. And that admin, just a perfect example, it shows that they are the weaker side when it comes to hunting these roamers and they get to go to their third bomb site, the lobby, which does open up a lot of potential off-site holes and kind of roamers can have a lot of fun. Fours haven't really went for a heavy C4 lineup at all throughout the game. There hasn't been like one lineup where I look at and say, okay, they're really trying to prioritize the, the room game. You know, not a single pulse. Valkyrie, of course, off the board, which is an operator that they can choose as well. Uh, in the past, that's been one of their big mainstays for. Consulate is having that information, but they've kind of favored more of like the Doc and the Maestro combination just to give them those longer range angles because Consulate is a very, a very long map if you look at it. Yeah, it's it's the weird kind of shape that isn't really seen on too many other maps. It's completely flat in terms of just the wall a rectangle, space. isn't it? Just yeah, which is why we kind of say, well, you got to ban Valkyrie because one Valkyrie camera can get fifty percent of. Yeah, the you put one on Southwest. That's all you need. Yeah, that's it. And then you, there's no other maps where that is kind of replicated. And you know, and it, it shows in the play style of this map as well that teams can be quite aggressive with it. We've seen. You know, teams that have opted for that jump out strategy and the run out strategy. We've only really seen one of those so far today, or attempted at least. But as a game kind of prolongs, it's something that just builds in momentum and builds in rapid rapidity. Uh, especially when obviously you do have Valkyrie on the board. The information Forza are playing with at the minute is kind of well, we've seen them push uh, it panic twice. mode. I think is what we call that. Hit the big red button. That is Lion, and see what you can kind of provide. Uh, this is actually like the one occasion where Mute isn't being brought by Forge, where they have kind of like brought that quite a bit. And it would actually be like the time where it would have helped them going up against the Lion and the Doka Bee. And if you didn't know, Mute is like the ultimate counter to both of those. We very rarely see, I think, the Doka Bee Lion combo work as effectively as what it used to back in the day, you know, Season 7, Season 8. That was like the. You know, what we say about that, that was absolutely incredible. That combination was around for so long. Incredible, it depends what side of it you're on. <laughs> I think I, yeah. absolutely powerful, I think, is a fair description. Rask, this time around, can't get his opening knife kill against Juzu, who actually finds the frag instead. The lion just watching and waiting and ready to pounce and pounce as well. 
And now it's just a matter of seeing if they can capitalize on it. As you can see, they're repeatedly and well, quite intently concerned about any of the possibility of angles, jump outs, and run outs. Even though they have the Nomad on the top and on the main door, it's still the constant fear with all the front facing windows, especially on a point like this. It looks like they've realized that there's no one in this point, and they're just going to try and quick in and sneak a plant, and Lackey's going to catch anyone on the rotate. But there's still vertical control. There's still the drop down hatch. There's smoke holding in the center. They're trying to smoke off the entrance, but nobody actually swung in with that. They're going to drop down the line and double down the information as they try and sneak the plant in under the sound of it. That is from above. Line suffers the damage, and Freaky finds WTG, and another one against Camera, and now we're in a post plant. Wow, very rare take for Trocker, and that is a piano A take. Those are a bit of a head and jam, but whenever they work well, oh boy, are they impressive. So now fours on a 2v5 retake. There's an E1D to try and keep Shockwave at bay. Doesn't even have the hatch open. That's unfortunate. And Pasha, well, there's so many angles he has to look for. And Trucker, they have played that round exceptionally well, a flawless against fours. And they do give themselves a bit of a chance heading into the next half of a free free split on the attack. That's that's really good. Yeah, they read into the fact that nobody was inside piano. Maybe Forza forgot to open the drop down or put a little bit of top pressure because it's usually seen. You usually have that open just so for that kind of push where they can. They're not that comfortable just entering because they would have looked and they've gone. Well, they've got no rotations. They've got no obvious entrances. We can just kind of go in and plant. And they did, and it worked. And that just kind of shows a good understanding of your information balance, a good understanding of when you can apply pressure and how you can apply it, and it came out very, very well for them. Freaky on the vigil. I'm expecting it's going to be a big problem in these sides and the tops and every other side of Forza now. Obviously, we've already talked about the speed of Rome, and this is the first time I would say we're seeing a stereotypical by-the-book Rome operator. Yes, we've seen, obviously, Jaegers, Mozzies, and those kind of players in the hands of the uh, Forza, but Vigil is built for the roam. He's built for taking time and information. Let's see how much freak he can take. Already, someone's been shot right off the spawn. And that's a stim pistol already being used. So, a little bit of an oops. A little bit but, but that, that's okay. We have oops, don't we? They happen sometimes. They do. Fours, I'd imagine that they will be just... <sighs> They're just going to excel now in the attacks. Like They turn into real demons whenever they have a bit of steam behind them. This is like the basic lineup. They have a lot of soft breach, so they will try and go for a run clear. Would you see WTG? Would you see the way he plays? He can play that supporting flex role oh so well, but at the same time, he's not afraid to kind of play as like a lone wolf and just go off whenever he has an opportune moment. Uh, moment. So really for Trucker, they need to try and exploit a lot of the weaknesses that Force have, and that is potentially kind of getting carried away and playing by themselves. Well, Mozzie is taking control of the top floor. You can see they want to eat as much time as possible. They've also got Doc on the ACOG with rotation possibilities, so it shows that they want to kind of replicate what Force did. Keep the angles, keep the time, keep the momentum, and find bodies. Freaky gets Pasha, and WTG gets the instant refrag, and that was the aggressive spawn peak there coming out from the side of the fissure. We saw him knocking in windows, and he was able to get one from it but it was the sledge. So they've still got the buck on board. They've still got the ability for soft destruction and Zafir as well, if they really have to. You know, it's a pick, but there's bigger picks out there, to be fair. Yes, yeah, sledge. There's still the, you know, Rask on the buck, so it's not the biggest issue that Fords have to deal with. They still have plenty of things open. It's not as if they've lost Kama right off the rip, where Fermite would put them at a big disadvantage. And Fords leave open up Breach really light. Like, they will take their time with the more dedicated room clear out where they have, you know, Kama instead of open up the wall, he will be droning primarily for his team. We do see a mid-floor hold as well from Truckett, and again, this yellow stair still hasn't been dealt with with fours. I'm really surprised though how this hasn't worked. There's only one guy on site at the moment, and if you look at it from like the early game, there could have been potential for fours just to rush in through breach. Uh, if they didn't want to go for the room clear up, but hey, it's, it's their decision if they want to go for it. And it hasn't paid them too well. Well, you can see they're putting the pressure on the man in yellow. He's just going to rotate out of there. They've managed to push them down, but at this point, that's the smart move of what the defenders want to do anyway, because there's only a minute 10 on the board. They still have bodies inside the second, uh, inside the first floor, and then the basement itself. Shockwave, in the meantime, 
has crept his way down on this yellow side, but without the control down against where Juzer is, without the control down against the piano room, there's still so much work left to do in the side of Forza. And the time that they can do it in is slowly getting thinner and thinner and thinner. They're doing a pretty coordinated breakdown here, but it's never going to be a comfortable push if they haven't got the bodies that they know are above, especially when we've already seen them be quite malleable when it turns to vertical play. Smoke hasn't actually moved this entire point. There he goes, and Shockwave is able to find Nazarak and knows that the space around him is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. They're going to collapse in. They see his hand, and they use that to kill him with it. But with 20 seconds on, Lackey finds Rask, and it's now a two versus two. They know where Maestro is because he's just killed someone. He's behind the back of the van. They're going to aggressively push, but the pings are coming out. Going to have to find a quick swing there. Does, but the person has doubled down towards the side of pipes. Has to swing up. Doesn't see him, but does in the end, and Kama yet again pulls a round out for Forza. How have they pulled that off then? 30 seconds to go. They were still at such a hefty disadvantage. Shockwave came in massive with two kills. Then he threw himself away, which looked to be a massive throw, just dropping the hatch with no information whatsoever. And then Fermite does that. He became a drone, Shockwave. So I'll drone ahead. They'll shoot me. Yeah, then, I'm and, the human sacrifice. And then you so the blood oath has worked. And then you just shoot both of them. Is that the whole surprise from Forge, is that they will sacrifice a body to get two in return? Hey, if the system works. Uh, setting themselves up for the same lineup here. The change, I was going to say the change on the defenders was the mirror for the vigil, but then they sixth pick it back anyway. So they're kind of baiting a play style. Vigil's going to go up and about and do his run out stuff. Maybe not going to spawn peak again this time, as we've already seen Forza are very good at closing down on that quickly, but hey, you never know. It's a sixth pick. Might be trying to look for the second time. Attackers need to so we move in next to the garage once more, and... Exactly. Looking at the setup from Truckett, similar again. I think they're just going to go try for the exact same thing, where they have this extension in towards the mid floor. Same extension in towards top floor, I suspect. Now it's a question of what will fours do differently? Will they try and attack? Which they did not really have a great room clear out. It would look pretty sloppy. If it wasn't for Shockwave turn up with two kills, they wouldn't have even gotten close to the bomb site. Whenever there is like literally only one guy on site, that rush is such a big potential. And I don't know if Forza will try and go for it because it's such a high risk, high reward kind of strategy. And if you get that call wrong, then it can end in misery, similar to what Forza did to Trucker on the first attack where they tried the rush in free garage. A lot of decision making now for Forza. Well, they're setting themselves up in a fairly similar hole to how they did it before. A lot of rotation possibility on the top floor, eat as much time as they can, and then hopefully have a bit of a better response when it comes down to a close, because it was a two versus one, and the hot pings were coming out as well, and you had, even in the one versus one, the complete drop on where he was, and in the firefight, you got the first bullets off, and you just couldn't get them to land, unfortunately. So I guess we'll see if they can keep that momentum up. They might be able to make it work the second time. In the meantime, Forza, so they're going for the standard clear across the top here. They're going to try and, I guess, hopefully close it down with a little bit less bloodshed on their side because they did obviously lose people very quickly. They know Vigil is about somewhere, but they don't quite know where. He didn't go for the spawn peak that he did previously, and I think that's going to work in their favor because the amount of time that I guess they read that Forza used to clear across, it will, again, just be another operator to slow that down. The only thing about Trucker and their defense is that they're set up the exact same way they did last time, and Forza already playing against it. They know what to expect. There's nothing that's going to catch them by surprise. Only equation that we could kind of add in there is Freaky, who hasn't died compared to the last round where he did get that spawn kill, but then automatically being trade off. He pushes up Spiral, which was a position that nobody held from Trucker before, so Forza didn't really add that into their strategy, and they have paid dividend for it, as that's Rask gone. Well, Pasha is trying to, again, find a bit of a cover here with WTG nomading off the backside, but there's still a body not too far away. They're still aggressively holding onto this mid floor now at this point. They've pulled back, but the angles are there, and there's the top of yellow instantly swinging against Shockwave with Pasha trying to get the refrag against it, but can't quite get there in time. Lackey from underneath finds one, and there's the Mossy getting at least traded. But there's only under a minute left, and they've finally got the front of Garage open. Camera, in the meantime, is doing his own Thermite business, but 
with all the control still in the favor of Troker, which we said at this point last time, yeah. Forza need to start doing something. So if WTG can try and pull something magic, which he's known for doing those crazy plays, and Big Pasha, he's still all geared and ready to go, and, well, as I say that, eliminate it straight away, and still not being able to drone out. Freaky, he had a big impact compared to the last round, simply because he didn't go for a spawn kill, and it has gave Truck, it looks to be, the round win. I don't think Cam is in any position, any shape or form to actually clutch this out, and now it's just going to be time for Fords to kind of talk over what went wrong, and truck it, they just have to lock it out. Doc does peek in, gets eliminated, but then there's the evil eye pinging in and still zapping him away. Can't really do much about that one. Yeah, it becomes a bit of a tight situation there. When you're kind of up against the odds and ends, they still all have a lot of their structural defenses left in, and they have a lot of things kind of under their control. <laughs> You know, this is why you need to deal with that top floor. And so far, what Trocket have been very, very good at is they throw people on the top floor, they keep the firefight there for as long as they can, and then they pull back. And then they keep the firefight on the first floor, the middle floor, for as long as they can, and then they pull down again. And that kind of, you know, raindrop-style defending where it just eats as much time and as much utility as possible just means that when you do come to what is often a heavily structured defense, they'll know they'll be up against Maestros, they'll know they'll be up against a fair mix of stuff. It becomes a pretty bitter battle. Console is where we're going to swing to, the very top floor now. Mira, yet again, being sick pick, this time to Mozzie, who is otherwise not otherwise on the board, and Kaid is being bought. Yeah, for the first time, we will see a bit of denial, but how is this one going to work, though, for the top floor, which is what I'm more curious about? Fermite or Habana isn't really used that much towards the top floor. The only situations that you would see a Fermite charge is... Either on the yellow single wall leading into B, which generally doesn't even get touched anyway because you swing in through the windows. Sometimes bathroom wall gets opened up, but typically we see a lot of defenders leave that open anyway. And the other one would be opening up the quad wall towards the admin side, but that's risky because that's right in the open of everything. So Fermite never really gets the chance to shine. He's just now a Fragmite. Habana is more of the common one because Habana would go in towards projector room and would simply open up the meeting room near the little uh, bottom left-hand corner to stop the positioning of like a smoke who would play normally in that kind of corner behind a shield. Keeping their sight lines open has been a pretty big part of Trocut's defenses so far, and they've used them very, very well. In the meantime, another big part of their defenses has apparently been really injuring one of their players, and this time they don't have the dock to be able to bring the Maestro back up to full health. So I'll just play with a half-health Maestro, but he's still a big lad, so he should be able to walk it off. In the meantime, Forza, they've so far looked pretty low energy, and they've not really had the same kind of ferocity we expected to see. As we said, there's always external factors and extenuating things, and playing off against Pro League is always a very big thing indeed, especially when the end of your season came down in CL to a little bit of a uh, tighter race than you expected. So it's trying to find a way in a th uh, game that also matters, but might not arguably matter as much. Maestro just swings wide, drops Rask, who again seemingly wasn't really paying too much attention, and this is the kind of mistakes that we keep seeing from them. Where was the drones? Why was there no drones from fours? They do pick it up, however, and eliminates the maestro, and now we just have to pray that those maestro cameras are faced into the correct positioning, or else that says a big waste of utility. Kama will open up that single wall, so yeah, there is a, you know another wall there being used by the hard breacher, but I don't think it's gonna come into that much of an effect. Shockwave does eliminate another one, and well, he's kinda came alive now in the attack with that Sophia. By sure, camera. Just, you're getting there. Go on, hang in there, Pasha. There you go. But then on the flip side, we do see it square off back into a free-on-free as Jaeger, who has been left to his own kind of roam game, has eliminated another player of force. Yeah, there's uh, the two bodies that were at the start of the round underneath, and now one of them has opted to swing back round. But in the meantime, Mozzie is still playing down to the basement stairs. Here's the Nomad goes off and just pulls back because they triggered it and knows they want to bait it. But in the meantime, the in increasing pressure from Shockwave is meaning that they're going to have to start making their way back round because now it is only the free key of Mozzie, and they are found out on the lobby stairs as well. Forza 5-4, we find ourselves in. That was a quick one very quick round and fours I feel just decisive in how they perform on those admin takes 
this is a big reason why fours are a really strong team because arguably i feel as if they're one of the best teams taken admin i really feel as if just overall they have a lot of things going for them that they do correctly and do right well maybe apart from that sloppy droning but still they make it work it kind of reminds me of what empire used to be on like oregon on kids windows because they were like untouchable on that map and fours definitely show that same correlation and consulate well let's see if they can double up on console, obviously they took Cafe first and then lost it. So, or if Drocket can find a response, they managed to previously. They're generally going for exactly the same stuff. We haven't really seen any change from fours. They've generally opted for the same five operators, the same operating style, and that is them, pretty much. It is just them to a to a T, pretty much. They don't change a whole lot of things. Trucker will be going upstairs once more. Of course, defending that garage means they don't get to have another go at that one until the next round. But perhaps I may be too late. This is a big decisive one, I feel, for both teams. If fours take that, they have then that kind of two-point two, two point gap, you know, that safety net behind them. If Trucker do pull this one off, then we will see all 12 rounds, and that can really go either way, because then Trucker, they get to go to the garage, which has looked good for them. And then it's really up in the air at that stage. Yeah, and that's the thing. So whatever happens this round, we know we're going to be seeing a the cafe point next. And we know that Trucker, they look better and better on it. And Four's kind of, well, they looked a little bit lost in the uh, previous spin around cafe. So we'll see if they can kind of come up with a better response. In the meantime, we've still got this round in play. They're opening up their sight lines, opening the rotations. Potentially going to see the uh, Mozzie and the Jaeger collapse a little bit earlier because they kind of... They waited a bit too long for things to kind of kick into gear. And at that point, obviously, Forza had already made their way through admin and had taken out most of the bodies on the top floor. And when you're pushing back up against those stairs, against the team that's opened up all the sight lines and angles on the stairs that they need, especially with the Nomad on the board that is so consistent and so prevalent in the form of Forza, well, then it's a nightmare for all of us. In the meantime, it's a bit of a slow and steady as they find their way in, get themselves droned up inside admin, and at the same time, that is an attempt... Well, that's that's some eyes on a run out from Mozzie, but there's also someone way back at spawn waiting as well. Fours will be taking that admin control, and this time they do drone, so Ras doesn't get eliminated right off the rip. Shockwave, I'm sure, will try and play those windows, and, well, he got three kills from it the previous round and really shockwave has really lit up for me this match specifically i was expecting someone like ras to be that mainstay sure ras had that quad kill that one round but shockwave especially has kind of dragged them out of the hole nine times out of ten while opening up the sides towards the copy rotation so they have a bit more maneuverability around this point and don't get themselves caught and funneled out sees the maestro camp and it's just going to quickly get rid of that with the sledge and doesn't get picked off by the wide point. In the meantime, Freaky has suffered half health from the attempted Zephyr. As we said, Shockwave was covering from the spawn, saw them playing around on windows, and has joined them out to decide to put on a bit of pressure. And that's going to make their close down a little bit tougher. But with a minute 10 on, and still some utility in the books, it's a lot left in terms of the defenders. And they've got to start making their way through, I say, as WTG makes his way through Lackey. And that is the lesion off the board, so that's going to make that final pressured push a little bit less concerning. Shield will get eliminated by the nades of fours, and it does force the smoke back in to the bathroom. Still long angles being held by the maestro, trying to lock it down. I'm sure there is information being gathered via the maestro cameras that I hope is still up, but could have been destroyed in that period of time. Fours all stacked up now together for the A-bomb site. A rumor will be lurking below, and fours now, they have to be a little bit skeptimistic of where he will end up. WGG still playing on that spiral. We'll get another one. Here comes the Jaeger that he needs to fight next. Well, 15 seconds, they're going for the plant. Smoke throws it and tries to bleed it round through the wall, but Camera's just able to stick that plant in and amongst it. With 10 seconds off, in a post-plant situation, Rask Gets another, Juza finds Pasha in a 2-3, we're in a post plant, and that's a 1-3. As it is all down to Mrav, the maestro, to make some magic. The planter is down and doesn't quite see him, but the car is on the window. Thermite trying to hide the diffuser under his body and leave himself to cover it. Match point and series point, Forza.
That was an important one for Forks because it gets them right up in there for the lead, having the match point. They get to have another go at the garage, which has been won by them before, but they have also lost it. And it was a real weird circumstance in that second round where Freaky did a lot of damage with the Rome game on the Vigil. So this is now the third time that Forks go up against it. I really wonder if there's going to be an aggressive rush this time around. Well, I think what we, you know, the previous round looked the best attack they've had. Even though they've taken, obviously, three attacks at this point and only lost one, that attack was by far the only one where, for me, they looked like they were in consistent control. The first one that they got was down to some great clutching by yep. Thermite and some confusing trades and moments. The one before on console, you know, it came down to a little bit of a hit and miss, but if the defenders were a bit quicker on their rotation back up to the top floor, they might have been able to find something in it. That one was pretty decisively there. They never really lost the control that they took. They were happy and steady to move across the top floor. And if they can try and translate that to this, where they've been able to consistently, well, they've not been able to consistently shut down the Romers and find them and control them, well, you know, that could be the breakdown. But I guess we'll see if they can pull it away on this or if they find themselves battling on either console or potentially even the lobby. Yeah, lobby could be another option if they they do go for that, but they have to win this garage first off. Setting up for another heavy room game. And honestly, I could see the rush work wonders for Force. It's so simple for Force to lock down Yellow. They bring the Nomad. They can sanction off the rotations. They go for the quick plan. Heck, they could even leave one guy patrolling those piano windows to make sure they can't get killed from the vertical angles above. They could honestly go for a rush and it would work with only pretty much one guy on site, and that is being the Maestro. If he gets eliminated, well, then it is pretty much DEFCON 1 for Truck at that moment. Yeah, it's the thing about both teams so far is the Maestro has been very integral to how things have kind of played out, and I guess we'll see if, uh, well, what the response is to their previous loss. It seems like they still want to do the clear that they had before, get the bodies from the top and crack their way steadily down. And they're doing this from a bit of a split size. Shockwave is putting pressure on the west as uh, the sledge puts pressure on the east. Pasha, and you know, it's just trying to find the bodies. But again, it's the balance of time, which has sometimes been quite a big issue for them trying to get these bodies. Because as we said, the kind of rainfall defense that Trucker is going with has been exceptional so far. The pacing of it, the kind of weight of how much they're throwing and how much they're trying to risk with each floor is, well, it's coming through. Freaky finds Pasha and WTG finds the refrag very quickly. And that is yet again the soft destruction of first. But they still have the backups off destruction. That's what I like about fours for console. They will bring both. Just in case someone gets eliminated, then they still have that accessibility of being able to carry out their plan nonetheless. Freaky is gone, and it's pretty much playing out the same way the first one did for Garage, where it was a quick trade between uh, Pasha and Freaky alike. C4 being wasted by Lackey attempting to blow off the guy onto the connector window. Very strong position that we see played throughout this map. Again, another lack of droning by Fords is really costing him this roam hunt. You know, what's the point of going for the roamers if you don't try and find them first? Why push in blindly? Makes no sense. Especially as they knew a C4 had just been tossed onto the close corner of that window as well. You would assume there's someone dug in on console and you would, I guess, be a little bit more attentive to the possibility of the rotation and connector. But Shockwave is trying to aggressively find the man on the top of yellow. In the meantime, being concerned about the man in console and it's down to Rask who's gonna try and deep arm a frag grenade against the Maestro Cam first before deep arming anyone that is back on the point. But there is only 40 seconds on the board. There's three of the Forts players left and they still haven't got this top floor. They lose another body. It's two people left against three, but they've got to go up against the Maestro and a Smoke and they're still on the roof. Kama was specifically on the skylight to hold the man on yellow to make sure he couldn't escape and he just lets him run past. How has he had that happen then? And now fours have to pull off yet again. Another miracle clutch for Cam and Shockwave to do, but I don't think they have enough time or the manpower to make this happen. They will try and push in and go for the defuse. Shockwave giving as much cover as he can, but the information being added in and the downs there from above. And Truckett, they win it down to, yeah, again, I think time for fours being the real enemy against them. I just really don't understand why they're being so slow on that top floor. Like, yes, they're doing the heavy roam game. They're throwing three bodies up there, 
but the responses to how they're shutting down is a mix of lack of droning and lack of initial positioning. If you look at the formation that Fords had going for them that top floor, if they still had that man who didn't get picked off by lack, I think it was what, WTG? Why didn't they move him to the B windows, which was yep. completely open to eliminate that top floor? That's you see, Choco, if he rotated from the connector one over to that, and as soon as he did that, he got a kill. Yeah. Why did that not come in way quicker? Very quickly. And it's that kind of just lack of energy and lack of urgency about their how, how they're trying to take that is really feeding into well, the problems that we're seeing when they try and collapse against the bottom point. It's all well and good to take your time doing the top floor clear when you are pushing the top floor as we're seeing them do. They send one person, usually shockwave below, to deal with whoever's decided to go down, which was freaky, and then the rest of them push admin and then push across. That's their top floor tape. They're trying the same thing, the same way that Empire would do against the basement, but they're doing it with the same pace as if the point was the top floor, and it's just really, really not hitting the mark. They do get to have a go on this top floor, though. Look at Mrav. He's brought in the Frost. Mm. Now, this could be pretty spicy for them. Add a little heat into the mix, but I don't think he'll get a kill from it. I think it's going to be very rare if we see fours fall for this, and whenever they do send in at least a couple of drones out to clear away anything that could be lying in wait, and I don't think the Frost match will come into that big of a deal. I do like, though, that they're still playing Freak in the Vigil. Whenever there has been like a, a very small percentage of droning from Fours, all he has to do is dodge that one drone, and he is in like you know the go-to position is to start fragging out. There's a lot of pressure now on Trucker, because they're still on that gasp of match point where if they lose this round, that's them done in this tournament, and Fours they will push on to the quarterfinals to face Vitality. And even Fours, if they let this slip, and, and we see Trucker go to a third map, that's like a massive upset in my eyes. Yeah, because I know this is Trucket's map, but both of us know this is a very strong consulate map, so they've just done their homework against Forza, and maybe that's why they wanted to come here, because there's so much kind of groundwork about the team on this map, and there's so much kind of history there already that they know exactly how Forza are going to play it, and they can kind of set up responses. Bank could be a little bit more of an unknown for them, and it's kind of fallen away to its third, and... You know, I guess we'll obviously have to see, because if we do end up there, it's going to be a pretty big bit of battle. But we are still, obviously, on the match point possibility here before we head into overtime. Lackey is free to rotate on the far side with Juza, and you can still see Freaky underneath. They've generally thrown four people. They're going to try and catch the first swing here, and they do. Naz drops Rask as the drone pops around the corner. The man goes in before the drone. That's the issue that Fours are dealing with, there's a mozzie drone to support Mrav in what he's trying to do with this aggressive frost with a 9mm ready to hit like a truck. But it's still up in the air for the meantime. Fours are trying to get everybody into the building as much as they can. Here comes Shockwave on the rappel. The upside down rappel, more importantly. There's Mrav. He does swing on round, eliminate Pasha, and we could be headed to OT. Well, they're trying to pincer against this Jaeger, but there is the man behind them who's crept in behind WTG. It's the same Frost from before that was just free to rotate in and amongst them. You just... Yeah, and it, it's those little moments of communication and dropped kind of intel. Camera at least finds one and Shockwave brings it back, but there's still the Frost in the admin office. The same way we saw the Jaeger of Kammer do this same trick, Frost is the one that's trying to play it at this point. It becomes who will be the winner of the office space. They are waiting for any audio of either as they sit two lovers opposite houses and only divided by one set of computers, very thin MDF. The drones are coming out round. They see the footprints, just have to bang him, and there it is, Kammer! Finally finds the Frost, brings it to a 2-2, but they've still got to push pressure against the point. There's one body in lobby. There's one around uh, the bathroom. They don't really know a full sight on where the Vigil is, and they're trying to desperately find it, but they need to pop in at this point because they're running out of time. Surely not. There's no way they managed to take this round. They still have two more frags to go. There's the Gooman that will slow down Kama momentarily. Shockwave now takes a deep plunge into the pool, trying to frag in, finds the Legion. Oh, but he wins that one out. How's he done that? And that's all it done for Fours. Truck it, they push on, they take the OT, and oh, that one was risky. I just have questions, I think, about just, you know, why Forts are playing 
this face check? Why are they trying to reveal? Yeah, Strocker have been very good at responding to what Forts have done. They have obviously done their homework. But those little kind of, you know, standard drills that you would do every scrim or every practice day and every dry run is those things about droning ahead and those things about covering angles. And it just seems like they're just, you know, wistfully walking into gunfire and into all the several times where trucker have just held angles and they've held them in places where all you have to do is drone first and at least it'll be a cost of utility but it forces them to kind of fall back i really was not expecting this this ah oh, it's not good one bit if you're fours you look really weak on the attacks which is like the highlight career of fours they have looked so indomitable that nobody's been able to take them down like, it's just basic stuff that that Trotkut are doing. Like, there is nothing crazy about their setups. You look at their admin hold, they hold vending machines. Who doesn't know how to push vending machines? But that's it. And I'm, sure, I'm sure even you know how to push I vending do. machines, Fluke. And it's not with face checking. And that's the kind of breakdown of like, it. The man went in before the drone. It's yeah, as if he was he was droning for the drone to get the frags. That's what it was like. And it, it's just curious little decisions that keep pulling apart what else they are doing. In the meantime, as we said, Trucker, they've obviously done their homework. They wanted to come here. They have the knowledge of how they want to take the fight. And, you know, they've been able to pull these rounds against a team that is historically very good on this map because they know how they're going to be playing and, and they're picking apart what ports are about at and the fact that they're starting on a defense here and the fact that they're able to start with the cafe defense, okay here we go this is what i wanted they're gonna go for the rush and this is like the ultimate play that i think could win fours single-handedly this round alone which was the big issue was the garage well it gets opened up now it's down to trucker to see how they can respond and try and adapt they have to know that this time around fours have all stacked up outside of the wall they should be expecting the rush they have them on cover and piano so they don't have to worry about verticality this is everything that fours need to happen is going for them right now take a little bit of time to get the drones in figuring out exactly where people are so not doing what Trucket did and that was a very quick and aggressive rush but still no kills on the board but fours they're just this is the deep plunge before the storm yeah they're just wearing it up Kama gets Mrav gets the opening frag and that gives Shockwave enough ground to swing in via yellow drops the camera sees the ping on pipes but is actually going to pull back and try and bait the collapse behind him they have the nomad charges set up in the air jabs they can see one body above and that's the man that has always been up there before they're trying to get stuff from the outside but nothing is quite landing as the c4 gets caught in the bushes and now it's just a matter of again finding one more body before they close in the man on pipes has already been spotted there's one to the right hand side of the white van and the other two bodies are directly above the point rask clears through right, finds yeah. naz lackey finds the refrag from behind the white but now it's a matter of the two bodies on the other side closing down they're trying to find the head of the person playing above and shockwave is just going to aggressively swing up pasha finds another bullets from freaky distract one man as he finds one but it's a post plant forza with the rush that you begged and called for when we saw the roam, they finally respond to how Trucker have been playing this previously. That's all I needed. That should now seal the deal. I don't see Trucker breaking the next defense for fours. That was the ultimate play that they had to go for. I was begging for it. And that's why they made quick work. Whenever you see a team that has four roamers pretty much off site, then why not just try and overwhelm the one man on site? Force didn't, like, automatically go for the push-in. They did wait a little bit of time, got their preparation set up. It did give Trucket some amount of space to bring players back into the bomb site. They knew straight away as soon as that wall gets opened up and towards that two-minute mark, which is different to how Force played it every other round. They knew what was coming. They knew what was expected of them. And then they all tried to rotate back. Look at the kills. Everybody this game has had, like, a moment. Pasha, perhaps, is a little bit weaker compared to what we usually see off him. Uh, let's see if we can try and get, like, an ace to try and even it back up. Yeah, just, just get a cheeky ace. Just get an ace, man. Come on. Easy. Ca cafe Garage they're going to up to, which was obviously a point that they won from a quick rush, or won against a quick rush, and then they won against the standard push. Console they initially flicked to, but they don't, they dropped it twice on their defenses, so I think it's fair for them not to opt to take it, because as I said, that's the main thing to take away from this. Trucker have done their homework. They've done their practice. They've analyzed and analyzed and analyzed, and, you know, it's done them a lot of favors in a match that, as we said, was 
predictably going to be potentially one-sided. At this point now, how much of that can swing you through just to get yourself back onto the defense and give yourself another go at this basement? I assume they're setting themselves up for their hold. Camera, obviously, who accidentally, well, I say accidentally, he's repeatedly found himself manning and gunning against a rush, and he was stood in a box and gunned two of them down. So how much of that is an accident, I guess, is down to you. But I guess we'll see what they can make of this, potentially, their last round. So, fours, they are on the match point. Series point as well, of course, we didn't get to see that first map because it didn't happen. Trucka, unfortunately, could not turn up to their first scheduled map. And, well, Freaky, already he's in and has eliminated WTG, and that's the smoke gone off the table. There's still a roam game, though, for fours, so they can fall back and try and rely on these great roamers to try and do the business. That wall's been opened up, but Shockwave is primed and ready on the yellow stairs to try and uh, eliminate that threat if it does come in. So yeah, for fours, they have two offsite, two roaming. Um, I don't know like if fours are actually gonna make this doable, but the way that Trucker are kind of setting themselves up, they look as if they're just gonna sack off the roamers and just try and execute on the site with a really well-timed push. Yeah, and obviously Freaky is the one that's kind of doing a bit of the business on the far side with Naz doubling up to try and put a bit more pressure on the far bit. But as long as they keep the roamers distracted or at least kind of cut off, I say, as Pasha drops one of them, then they might find themselves in a bit of a better swing. Pasha, in the meantime, gets revenge and drops Freaky, who's otherwise been a very, very big force, managing to get the opening frag at least five times throughout this game so far. So it's really kind of been a consistent problem for the defense of fours. Now it's just a matter of camera holding the long angle and waiting for someone to drift a little bit too wide into his gunfire. And oh. there it is. Mrav, who was wielding the maestro so well previously, gets a masterclass in the control of the gun. Unfortunately, it's via a bullet through the skull. So fours now, they have everything on lock. There has to be a crazy play from truck at line somewhere that they can throw into this round and create an upset. Still, you have players scattered around. Nobody really supporting each other, but there is one for Naz that they kind of needed, but Pash is right there with the refrag, and now it's looking grimmer and grimmer by the second for Trucket. And just one more player. Fours, they have the man advantage. They have still control of the bomb site. 40 seconds on the clock. We need to see an absolute phenomenal play from Trucket. Never mind. Yeah, unfortunately, that doesn't come to fruition. But in all fairness, that was a phenomenal map for me from Truck. It was, they, yeah. They played fantastically. They really read into what was going on, and they almost bought it back. And they're apologizing for the one map wait. It's unfortunate, but that's the way things go. But they've still got to give themselves credit for how they played. However, they are not the team that moves forward in the bracket. That is purely the hands of the Russians. Yep, that's all our round of 16 games done and dusted. And well, for they it was an easier time for them getting that first map, but still they had to work for that second map, which I think is the big talking point, is that we were really surprised that Fords, they struggled as well as they what they did. Yeah, I think that's the kind of breakdown of it, is you, they didn't massively show up to the standard we expected them to show up to today. Their best round was the one where it was really on the wire when they were pushing Cafe the second time, uh, or the first time of overtime even, but now they are through and they're up against Vitality next, and that is a tough game. Two O's all across the board as well for round 16. I would say that we expected every team that is in the quarters, we expected them to be there. Perhaps the Trust Orgles was like the only one in contention because there are two CL teams. Yep. But of course, you look at CL standings, Orgles is above Trust in that scenario. So it probably is the better team who did win out of that. Yep. But we still have one more match to go and it is our first quarter final for EU. It's G2, it's the World Champions going up against Orgles. We'll see you after the break.
predict the outcome, win the game. Get live coverage and schedules for your favorite tournaments. Analyze, predict, and vote to gain points. Compete with other esports fans and climb the leaderboards. Straight. Everything esports. Download now on iOS and Android.